I also want to mention for everyone that's here, we have a couple of our um, El Paso Giving Day Committee members. So I see Kelly, Stephanie, um, Luca, who's actually our newest member. Um, so just a little shout out to those of us that are joining. Um, Vanessa, thank you as well. In case you all have any questions, um, this is part of our team, so feel free to ask as well. Okay. So just for purposes of time, and I hope everyone can hear me okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. And um, I would really like to first and foremost just thank everyone for joining us for our first workshop of the El Paso Green Day 2022 campaign. Um, we have some really great workshops underway and some special events that will be happening from now to October 20th. So thank you all for joining us once again. Um, in case you missed it, today's topic is on planning for impact, drawing lessons to create a meaningful campaign. Um, if you haven't already, feel, please feel free to share um, what color you're feeling like today and let us know how many years you've been involved in El Paso Giving Day. Um, is anyone else having trouble hearing me? I have a note that maybe I might be hard to hear. Okay. So we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, so now that we've sort of talked about today's topic, I wanted to, again, just introduce myself. I'm sure a lot of you are um, familiar with who I am. I'm Andrea Macias, the Development Coordinator for the PDMCF. I won't share too much about myself. You can go ahead and read it on the screen. But I'm actually super duper excited to introduce our uh, speaker who's going to be working with me on today's presentation. Her name is Luca Diaz. Uh, Luca, she's wearing blue. <laughs> Lupa is the Community Relations Coordinator for the Humane Society of El Paso. In this role, she is responsible for fund development, marketing, and partnership management. Lupa has also experience in volunteer management, outcomes tracking, fundraising, sponsorship, solicitation, in-kind requests, events management, problem solving, partnership development, and client relations experience. So let's all welcome Lupa here with us today. And I'll give Lupa an opportunity to sort of share a little bit more about herself. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you all today. Um, this is going to be my third year participating in El Paso Giving Day, and the second year I run it. Um, so I'm very excited to share some information with you all today. Thank you, Lupe. Okay, yep. so we're going to go ahead and move on to our next slide. So I sort of wanted to cover what we're going to be talking about today in today's workshop. So some things you might notice or some things that we might talk about include reviewing 2021. Um, so we're going to go ahead and learn how to audit your year and how to identify key patterns and lessons to have a successful giving day campaign. We're also going to look towards 2022. You'll consider an intention and outline sources of support and inspiration. And finally, with Lupa's help, we're going to go ahead and share our experiences and insights. You'll hear, you, you will hear from Lupa and um, sort of consider the things on uh, creating a successful giving day campaign. So we're going to jump right into the nitty gritty. Um, if you have any questions, just a reminder, please feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll have a Q&A at the end of the presentation, and we'll try our best to respond to everyone's questions. So I just wanted to share um, a key thing that I noticed while developing this presentation was the importance of evaluation and uh, taking note of how your results compared to your campaign's goals and uh, ways to build future success. So we sort of identified some key, key ingredients, excuse me, that should make up your campaign. So when you're designing and evaluating your campaign, you really want to look at the whole picture. The whole picture can include themes, key messages, tactics, timelines, targeting, roles and responsibilities, 
goals and metrics, and your budget, if any. To sort of diving into each of these topics, when we're thinking about theme, we're really thinking about what you're focused on. So in terms of your Giving DA campaign, are you looking to uh, support a specific program? Really defining your goal is what we're talking about here. For key messages, this is also very important to think about. How are you communicating your ask? How are you communicating to your constituents? How are you communicating to your donors? For tactics, what strategies are you choosing and why? So what makes you decide to make an ask a certain way? Or what other strategies have you developed that you have learned and have been able to grow? In terms of timeline, timeline is also very, very important, especially for El Paso Giving Days. So as you all know, we have several workshops, fundraisers, events. And there's definitely a lot of milestones that you want to be seeking and accomplishing. So do you have a timeline for meeting your goals? In regards to targeting, who is your audience? Once again, think about your donors and your constituents. For roles and responsibilities, this is you, this is your team, this is your organization. Who is your team and how are you dividing and conquering? I think Lupa has some special notes about working um, in a team as well. Uh, I also just wanted to add goals and metrics. How are you going to define your goals and how will you look and use your metrics for reporting and impact purposes? And finally, your budget. As I mentioned before, do you have a budget that you can amplify um, to better leverage your campaign, special events, lives, et cetera? Um, as a reminder, looking at this data will help you make informed decisions and have an accurate picture of your organization's health. So I sort of wanted to hand it over to you to speak on these topics and her specific experience as uh, we're heading for the Thank you, Andrea. Um, so like Andrea was mentioning, the theme is very important. Um, when, we, when I first started and um, I actually inherited working on El Paso Giving Day from our previous community relations coordinator, which was amazing. Um, but she kind of spearheaded as a one person um, project at the beginning. Um, so she did a great job when she was doing that. So, but we became more success, successful when it, we included more of our staff. So we started thinking of our theme ahead of time. Um, and like I was saying, we, at the beginning, we just thought, you know, we create the page and just let it, it's going to create itself. We're just going to go ahead and, and it's going to fundraise for us. But it's like any other event that we create. So it's, another, it's just like another telethon or a gala or a fun walk that we have. We have to start planning months in advance um, to go ahead and get the theme going, the messaging, um, all the good stuff that we need, the marketing, um, the social media calendars and our follow-up with our sponsors or our, our donors. Um, so for our theme, the Humane Society this year, if you've been following us, uh, for our Canine Classic and our Telethon that's actually two days away, we're focusing on our, our medical department. So um, and any theme that we're having is, uh, one of the social media blurbs that we use a lot is um, our, um, medical budget exceeds over $400,000 a year to provide medical care for our animals. And it begins at intake. Uh, and then we'll just do the examples for that, which is, um, it really helps break down our message and have our donors understand what we're putting their money in once it comes into our organization. Um, for tactics, uh, we use, this is a, a social media fundraiser. So of course we, we hit social media um, pretty hard. We start pretty much, I would say a month in advance doing like reminders like, hey, El Paso Giving Day is four weeks away and keep an eye out. And then once we get closer to the date, we'll start hitting it harder. Um, we also do text messaging. We use um, nonprofit exchange um, with John and Nandes. So we send text messages every once in a while reminding people, hey, it's around the corner or we're gonna do a live. Um, we also use constant contacts to do email blasts, um, which really help us, especially when we're trying to let people know, hey, we're gonna be doing a, a puppy live 
at four o'clock for the rush hour. So it really helps us keep our, our donors and our sponsors, um, not our sponsors, our donors informed of what's going on. Um, and your mail outs, we don't do mail outs for El Paso Giving Day, um, but it depends on your, your demographic. So if you have an older um, generation that follows you, go for it. I mean, it just depends. You wanna use your resources and target your demographic. Um, so <clears throat> that's really important not when targeting. <laughs> Sounds great. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our next slide. Um, so we've also sort of uh, provided some different metrics to help you evaluate the 2021 campaign. Um, we really want you all to look at the data and start evaluating by looking at your revenue. So what did you raise from last year? And if you didn't have or participate in El Paso Dignity last year, just really define what your goals are for this year. Um, what were your total number of gifts? How many gifts um, from different donors did you receive? What was the average gift size during the campaign? What were your response rates and click rates for each channel that you used? As Luca mentioned, really evaluating how many click or open opens of newsletters did you get? What do your social media analytics look like? Really evaluating what those numbers say and what they mean. Um, what is your retention rate of last year's campaign donors compared to your list of donors for this year? Um, did they give again? Um, how many new donors were acquired and how many new donors did you reach? How many new donors upgraded their gift um, maybe in 2020 to 2021 for this year from 2021 to 2022? And again, also looking at your donor demographics, learning more about why and who are your donors. Um, I also just wanna share a reminder that your donor detail report um, at the end of El Paso Green Day really shares a lot of information about who your donors are. And then of course, your ROI, your return on investment, if at all, if it's applicable, what did you put in and what did you get out? So I'll also just share, um, or give you an opportunity to share your insights. Thank you, Andrea. Um, so just like she was saying, uh, going to the dashboard and printing your reports is super important. Um, it'll let you know kind of who to target a little bit in the next year. Um, so definitely, and always have, um, make sure you know what is your goal you wanna raise and send one that, that is tangible. So, um, and always understand where it's going. So like for us, we'll use an example like $5,000 will provide an X number of um, X number of alteration surgeries for our, for our animals. So we always use those examples when we're talking about um, amounts or funds. Um, and for, and that's all the notes I have for this. <laughs> oh, great. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so I also just wanted to share some things to think about when you're doing your evaluation. Um, I think as I mentioned before, once you've pulled your numbers, it'll be really important for you to conduct a debrief with your team to go over the data. Um, you know, schedule it really soon and don't wait too long and keep the numbers fresh in your memory. Um, so first and foremost, as I mentioned, begin with the data and keep the evaluation going. You should be constantly thinking about what you can do better and think about if you met your goal and how much did you exceed or fall short. Stay focused on your mission and don't wait long to evaluate your results. Did you engage more donors to your mission? What was the time of the campaign? Did our community, your community, your constituents, your donors really believe in your why? And of course, be forward thinking and be honest. Look ahead and enter a problem-solving mindset. What do you want to maintain from your campaign? What do you want to change? And how can you leverage other, um, I guess, data through um, outside of the numbers? So is that testimonials? Is that interviews with your constituents, with your donors? How can you really expand your storytelling? Um, so these are all very, very important concepts to sort of think about when you're evaluating and working towards being successful in 2022. 
Any questions so far, Rupa? Do you have anything else to add? You know, just for this one, we look a lot at, at numbers. And if we hit our goal, do we raise the, the goal we wanted? And sometimes we fall a little bit short. Sometimes we surpass our goal, which is great. And sometimes we get discouraged because we might not hit it. Um, but I also like looking at how our message is getting through. So sometimes um, when you post something, at least I'm a little anal about looking like, are people sharing it? Are people liking it? Should I change the verbiage next time? So I think community engagement is really important to look at when we're trying to see how we did and planning for the, the future. Thank you, Lupa. So yeah. that's just, just once again to reiterate, to reiterate, excuse me. Um, you know, you might find a lot of evidence um, to understand if your strategies worked. Um, it's really, really important to find a baseline for your goal. That way you can look back at it for years prior and, and really understand your notes and, and why those things happened the way that they did. Um, you also want to remember to be mission-centered um, in your evaluation as this offers you a chance to connect all of the dots. Um, you know, it's entirely possible for your organization to raise more money than you imagined, which is what we're, what we're trying to do, right? But there's another bridge to cross. Um, did those funds make it to where they need to go in terms of your programs, missions, and goals? And did it create the opportunities or impact you shared with donors? Um, did your success align with what you were communicating to your donors and uh, aligning with them on what they're looking to support? So once again, I just want to remind everyone, um, you know, once the funds are counted, that is not the end of your campaign. After the thank you letters have been distributed, it can be very tempting to close the book until next year, but let's really try to resist and evaluate your results to include that data, this qualitative um, information from testimonials and interviews. That way you can really develop the best practices for achieving another successful campaign. Um, always be forward thinking. To answer every question about how um, your fundraising efforts work and perform, you should have an immediate follow-up with your team again to understand how to maintain or change the change. Uh, numbers tell a lot of the story, but not the entire story as well. So we sort of are going to jump into a little fun and brief exercise. So we talked a lot about evaluation and things that you want to think about. But if you have a pen or paper around, or if you want to drop your notes in the chat, I really want to think and engage everyone to talk about their superlatives. And I'm just going to pause for a second because I have some chats that I might be hard to hear. And so, Stephanie, um, I see your hand is raised. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you to ask your question. Oh, I think you're muted. Can you hear me now? <laughs> um, awesome. So I wasn't sure if the last slide was a place to ask this, but um, Lupe, thanks for, for sharing and presenting on this uh, workshop. But I wonder, do you have any comments about or suggestions about how you plan for the power hours? Um, you know, whether you're you're targeting a specific one, what's how do you all communicate that to your donors to make sure they're giving in the designated time that you prefer? Can you share a little bit about how you you all do that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we do target a specific one. And usually the ones we've been targeting for the past couple of years was the Nifty 50, um, the Global Giver and the Rush Hour um, Power Hour. Um, so this is where we utilize the text messaging a lot and we utilize the email blast. And we, of course we use our stories to make little graphics and, and let people know. Um, so for the past few years, the first year we actually did a puppy play group live. Super simple, we threw a bunch of puppies in one of our runs and we sat on the floor and we just talked about our puppies and we ran it for the whole hour from four to five. Um, but we sent out a text message, hey, join us as you're driving home. Uh, don't miss our puppy play group live. So we send a text message and then we send an email blast. And then of course we scheduled the story on Instagram and on Facebook. 
So we just try to use all of our resources to do that. Um, and of course, I mean, puppies, who doesn't want to watch puppies? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I mean, try to find something very creative that your organization has and unique um, that people really like about it. Us, it's the puppies or the kittens. Um, I'm not sure what organization you're with, but uh, just find that little niche that people love about your organization and then just market it. Just um, announce it, do a post the day before so people know and, and say, hey, you know what? The Humane Society is doing a live and I, I wanna see the puppies. So that really, really helps. Um, like for the Nifty 50, we did a lot of legwork the first year we, we did it. Um, and we started months in advance to start prepping for it. So we actually, you know, did our Google search and found phone numbers for humane societies and rescues across the country. And we hit the phones, some of our volunteers helped us. So we actually called a whole bunch of humane societies. And even though we didn't get the nifty 50, <laughs> you know, we were able to network with our friends that are doing the same mission that we're doing here in El Paso. And now we collaborate between each other. So it was a lot of fun. And then just knowing our message is spreading. So it's a lot of lay work and a lot of planning, but it, it's totally worth it. Great, thanks so much for sharing. No, you're welcome. And Lupa and Stephanie, uh, you all brought up a lot of great points. Um, and that's sort of what we're gonna practice here. So like I mentioned, if you have a pen or paper or want to share your uh, thoughts in the chat, I wanted to sort of engage everyone and think about these six questions that I have on the screen. So if you're, if you're willing to share, um, what, have, what has been your biggest blessing for your campaign, your biggest risk, your biggest surprise, what are you most proud of, what are you most grateful for, and what are you most joyful for, um, or the most joyful moment, I should say. So go ahead and drop your ideas in the chat. Um, and we'll sort of uh, talk about those a little bit more. I've also shared some examples that Lupa has provided on this, on this next slide, and we'll talk about them in a little bit more depth as well. So does anyone have anything to contribute? Drop it in the chat, raise your hand, and we can unmute you. We might take some thinking, but I see something from Tracy. For biggest lessons, email, text, and personal ask are usually more effective than only social media posts. I completely agree. Really getting to know your donor and building a relationship is a very important part of making a, a um, successful campaign. Natalie, I also see your hand up if you would like to share. Sorry, I'm like trying to figure out my, <laughs> my reactions. I'm like hitting all of them. So I would say that my one of the biggest lessons, um, not just for El Paso Giving Day, but just for fundraising and development in general, that is a good reminder for all of us is not to make assumptions. I think sometimes we think, oh, well, this major donor has already given to us. So I'm not going to go back and ask this donor to support El Paso Giving Day. Um, I would say, don't make those decisions for your donors, you know, let them tell you, you know, um, certainly you want to be strategic, strategic, you know, to loop in Andrea's point, like if you have a big gala, you know, um, a couple of weeks from El Paso Giving Day, does it make sense to target all of those individuals? You have to use your resources appropriately. But if there's one or two big partners who, you know, have consistently and regularly supported the, your organization, I wouldn't assume that they're not a good fit for El Paso Giving Day. The, that might be a perfect fit for like a match. You know, that way they feel like they're leveraging their support of your organization and helping you elevate El Paso Giving Day, you know, to another level, you know, for your execution and also to get your donors excited. I have found that the, the donors that you have with um, the longest history want to be asked to do more. And if they can't, they're going to tell you. But I think that's a good lesson and slash biggest surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. 
um, like I said, our talent fund is a couple of days away and we have had a sponsor that has come in in lower levels and this year, because we've grown that relationship with her, she's come in as our presenting sponsor. So um, like Natalie said, even though you ask um, multiple times from them, they'll surprise you sometimes, so. Any other thoughts or ideas? Um, I saw a question, which I think Lupa answered. She uses nonprofit exchange as her text messaging service. Mm -hmm. um, we also saw something from Rita. Let's go ahead and read that. Assistance League can bring kids back this year in person for Operation School Bell to pick out their weeks with the school clothes. We can't wait. That's a great announcement. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyone else that wants to share their ideas? And then we'll have Luca sort of discuss the things that she chose um, that we can see on the screen. If not, Luca, take it away. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I chose for one of them, biggest lesson, as the earlier you start, the better. And of course, seek support from your team. Um, I know some of us are, are very small organizations and don't have um, pay staff and you just, you're relying on your volunteers. Um, but that's okay, ask them. They're gonna be happy to, to help you, to send you a little video of saying, hey, you know what? I support the Humane Society because you know, 20 years ago I adopted an amazing dog and he changed my life or your board members. Um, and of course, starting earlier, the more prepared you are, the better. <laughs> and that's with any event. I mean, we're not gonna set up a talent on our gala in two or three weeks. We have to do the work and, and get it all together and for it to be successful. And then the second one I chose is more, most grateful, of course, our donors. It doesn't matter the amount they're able to give, um, without their support, we couldn't be doing our missions and helping our community better itself, whether it's through helping children that need clothes or for school or um, helping somebody that's suffering from mental illness or helping a dog find their forever home. We're all here to do our missions and without those supporters, we couldn't do it. So I'm the most grateful for our donors. Thank you, Luca. Well, I'd yep. love to add anything about your biggest risk, surprise, what you're most proud of, and your most joyful moment. What has your experience been like? You know what, the biggest risk I mentioned earlier was the Nifty 50 and the Global Giver. It was a lot of legwork. Um, our throats were tired from talking of, to so many shelters. Um, but like I said, it was worth it because now we have connections with the Humane Society in Florida, and so we collaborate or, or just throw back ideas on, on, especially during COVID, it was a lot of, you know, how are you gonna bring your volunteers back or things like that. So we've made a lot of friends, but, you know, even though it was the biggest risk, cause we didn't know if we were gonna get it, but we're putting all this time into it, it, it still paid off in the long run for us. Um, biggest surprise was exceeding our goal. Um, and that really helped because we started prepping so early. Um, and it's been a couple of years, and it's, so I don't remember the exact amount, but I know when our previous community relations coordinator, I mean, she rocked it, like I said, she was a, a one person dream team. <laughs> she was amazing, um, but it's hard to do it by yourself. It's a lot of posts, a lot of everything to go in there. Um, so when we worked as a team and we started earlier, it really helped us exceed our original funds, our original goals. So that that was a big surprise. Not a surprise. I mean, when you work as a team, it's it's amazing. So, but it was great. Let's see. Can't see the other one. So the most proud of is that we won the in 2020, we won the power hour for, for the rush hour. So again, it was the puppies. It wasn't us talking, it was all the puppies. They, they're super cute, but that, that was very, it was very surprising. <laughs> we were super surprised. We had a, a happy dance in our office because we won it. So it was pretty cool um, and most joyful. It's nice to see how engaged our audience is. Even if they can't support us by donating any money, you know, just sharing. That our, our social media or our text messages with their families, 
just knowing our message is going across is is amazing. It's it's nice to know that there's people out there listening and being the voice for the voiceless and helping us. All great things, all great things. Does anyone else have anything to share? Are you feeling inspired? Is this a helpful exercise? Um, of course, as I mentioned, we're going to make the presentation downloadable, but these are all really great things to feed your brain and get your gears going. So if there are no questions, we're going to move on to the next slide. Um, just a little bit of inspiration. It's not how much we give, but how much love we put into giving back. And so I think that's true for all of us being nonprofit leaders in our region. Um, so moving on, as I mentioned, to some intentions and inspirations for 2022. Um, as I said already, that is why we are all here. That is what we are most excited about. Um, so this is just another little exercise um, to help you choose your intention in 2022. So if you feel comfortable, if you want to share, go ahead and drop in your intention. Or maybe it's just your overarching goal for your El Paso Giving Day campaign. But these are just some things to think about. Why are you choosing this intention? What will it mean to you one year from now to have honored this intention? And what might it look like to follow this intention in years to come? It's also important to look towards sources of support. So one of the things that we are hearing is teamwork is really, really important. So identify and uh, identify, excuse me, people, places, events, habits, and or routines that can help you to be successful. Um, for me, you know, it's our fun development team. For Luca, I'm sure it's her little team. Everyone is different, but really identify who it is that you can rely on. Um, what do you want more in 2022? And what do you want less in 2022? This is also applicable for your personal life. You know, our personal lives go into our professional lives. These are all great things to think about. And then lastly, um, find a friend and set up some time to meet with them and debrief. Um, accountability is very important. I know a lot of us are doing the most with the least amount of resources. So it's super duper important that if your goal is to start early, you hold yourself accountable and begin your marketing campaign early. You're asking campaign early. Um, so it's really, really great that you can rely on these individuals. And this is a helpful tool to sort of get that going. Luca, do you have anything else to add? If anyone wants to share their intention, either through the chat or to raise your hand, I'd be happy to hear. I'm actually thinking of my intention for this year. <laughs> I but Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Luca. Go right ahead, Andrea. What were you going to say? What, what is your intention? Yeah, I was just going to share, I think for me, on a personal and professional level, that is growth. And so uh, growth for me, you know, in my personal life, but growth for me in my professional life. And I'm super excited to be spearheading El Paso Giving Day this year. So that is one of the things I hope to continue. Um, you know, we're already in the middle of 2022, but the, it, it, it's never too late and it never stops. So that's yeah. just me, if anyone else has anything to share. That's a great intention. Oh, <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on if no one has anything else to add. I actually see one last thing, Tracy, kudos to you. Um, Tracy's intention is to help organizations find matching funds. I think that is what people are most excited for this year. It's always the matching funds, so which um, can be very effective in inspiring gifts from other and new donors. So that's a really great intention. Does anyone else? Anything? I can't think of um, one word for like getting out of your comfort zone, especially with like new donors. And even in, you know, my personal life growth only happens by um, getting out of our comfort zone. So I was like, I don't know a one word for that, but it works. No, it works. <laughs> Thank you. Abby. Yeah, that's a really good one. Because you, at least approaching new donors, you do get a little nervous so I like that one Natalie put innovation 
innovation. Very good. Dang, you know, we have to change it up. How are you going to be innovative in your campaign? I also see awareness from Janet. And I also see Stephanie's hand um, held up. So if you want to say anything, Stephanie. <laughs> Yeah, Andrea, I think also um, just being intentional with sharing El Paso Giving Day. Um, I think there's a lot to um, be shared with our friends and family who think that they may not be able to make a big contribution in terms of philanthropy. I think, you know, sharing the message that collective impact is really important and it's a real thing. And somebody's $5 here and another $5 there and another $5 here, it really adds up. So I think the more that we share that message, um, you know, the more likely they are to log into the Giving Day website and then donate to multiple causes. So I think being intentional with just sharing the message of philanthropy across all ages is going to be really important. Um, and if, if I could just remind everybody that the one of the workshops is a bring a friend session. Um, this is your cue to, to invite someone and put it on their calendar so that they can join you in spreading the message of, of philanthropy. Yes, we're super excited about that upcoming workshop. Um, so that'll be the next one on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, who will be uh, hosted by Stephanie. So I'm super excited, and I hope everyone can join us on that next one. I see another question. Um, I will be showing the PowerPoint in case anyone has to drop off early. It will be uh, downloadable and accessible, both the recording and presentation. So thank you, everyone. So I have another quote, a lifelong learner is a lifelong winner. So I wanted to sort of open up a Q&A with Lupe, given her experiences and insights this far. So please feel free to drop your questions in the chat that you might have for Lupe. This can be about anything El Paso Giving Day. And I'll sort of get the conversation started and ask Lupe. Um, just to reiterate to us and share with us again, what has your experience been like um, being involved in El Paso Giving Day? So this is my first, my third year, I'm sorry. It's the second year I'm spearheading it. So no, wait, that's going to be four years. Because the first year that I was part of it, I was the volunteer coordinator here at the Humane Society. Um, and I don't know if you all remember, but they did giving time with Walmart. Um, so that was the first time that I joined. Uh, so it was a lot of fun seeing how many people came in to help us. Um, and I have to admit, even though we have three signature events here at the shelter, El Paso Giving Day is actually probably one of my favorite ones to do because it's not just focusing on your shelter or your organization. You know, we're all trying to work to make our community better. And I think that's why I really like El Paso Giving Day because we're all coming together to spread our, our messages. So I, I really like the idea of that and helping each other. That's why um, I guess that, that's why El Paso Strong stands out more for me because we're trying to better our community. So I really like it. <laughs> and I guess at the Humane Society, how do you define your goals? How do you build yourself up for success? It's a good question. So like I said, we're, we're, our medical is probably our biggest expense and everybody who works here is very passionate about animals. Um, so it's always looking at how we can better their situation. So if we're lacking in, in one department, we, we try to focus on that. Um, our medical department has really grown in the past years and we're able to take more medical cases um, that before we couldn't. So now we take harder cases like parvo and distemper from animal services and try to help them out that way because we've been able to grow our medical budget um, and our medical department. So I think we focus on that, on trying to better our departments and then put a, a tangible goal to the fundraiser we're doing. That's great. And, that, and that's definitely, I'm sure, something you communicate to your donors. Like, how are you going to use their dollars, right? Right. Um, I see a question, and I'll go ahead and let Natalie, or I'll go ahead and ask it on behalf of Natalie. Um, how do you engage your board members? How do you get your board members involved? That's a really good question, Natalie. Um, so we have some really good board members, and most 
I would say all of them are big animal lovers. The one that really comes to mind, he's, he's pretty new, but he's super engaged. And he actually moved to El Paso a couple of years ago from out of country. Um, and he adopted a dog from us. So he's just very, just because of the, the, the impact his dog made on his life, he's, he's super engaged with us and he tries to help us in any way. Um, but I think it's because of, of their passion for, for their animals that they're so in, engaged. Um, but of course we try to keep them up to date on everything we do um, and they're part of our e-letter um, so they, they know everything that's going on. So, but I think that's how we can try to keep them in, engaged. So that's definitely a great strategy to yeah, keep your audience engaged. Do you mm -hmm. have any other tips or strategies or um, things that you all do to um, engage audiences and bring on new donors? What are the most important strategies you would say um, being a part of a campaign? You know, I think it's trying to keep it new, as weird as that may sound, but our technology is changing every day. Social media is changing every day. So we're always trying to find a new way to engage and there's always different age groups and, but we still do our printed e-letter once a year for our older um, followers. We do um, monthly e-letters to people who subscribe through our website. Of course, our social media, we actually just launched a new podcast. Um, so we're just trying to do new things to, to break out and, and find those that new audience that's out there. That's great. And I, I personally, last year, I noticed a lot of the nonprofits, those of you that are here with us today, um, we're very innovative. That was the word that Natalie used. Mm -hmm. um, I think we noticed a really great group, um, an event by Chica Chat. So they actually had a whole mini event um, leading up to El Paso Giving Day. Um, they were there at one of the breweries here in El Paso. So they brought in their donors and their audience space uh, to really raise some good funds. Um, as you mentioned, Luca, with your lives, um, mm -hmm. Showing your donors the puppies, these are the, the things that you're helping with in the community. And so thinking of different and unique ideas to really um, spread awareness and, and grow engagement, I think are all very, very important. So mm -hmm. be unique, be fun, and be different. Um, I also wanted to ask you, Luca, how do you evaluate or rate your success? What numbers do you all look like, look at, excuse me? That's a really good question. So like I said, numbers are, are, most, are very important. Um, so of course we look at all the numbers, just make sure we hit our goal or how, if we were close or we you know, surpassed it by a little bit. Um, but then we also look at, at, like you said, the opens on the emails and how many shares we had and, and how far did our mes message get? Um, like with the global giver, we tried for it and we were surprised that we had donations in China and we had one in Afghanistan. So we look at all of that. It's not just looking at the, the actual, if we hit our goal, but we, we also look at our, our statistics on social media and the e-letters to help us improve for the next year. Does anyone else have any other questions they might want to ask me or Luca? I mean, um, I'm going to sort of volunteer our committee, but Natalie and Stephanie, Vanessa are also on the line. And so um, if there's any other questions or comments that you want to share or ask, now would be a great time to drop it in the chat or raise your hand. Y'all are a very quiet group today. <laughs> All right. So I don't see any questions, but we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, I just wanted to share again some milestones that you can be thinking of as you are completing El Paso Giving Day. Um, so first and foremost, it's very, very important for you to define your goals and outcomes. Set a goal and stick with it. Um, secondly, outreach, outreach, outreach. Be engaged everywhere. 
as Lupa mentioned, you know, you can do social media, Facebook, Instagram, likes, YouTube. Um, you can host an event. Um, but also being in the know of what's trendy and what's working, what the podcast, that's something totally different um, to really do some storytelling and get your audiences um, ready and excited. I also mentioned to get creative, facilitate philanthropy, be fun, be creative, you be unique. There's so many ideas and things that you can do to really engage your audiences. So it's very, very important that you think of some timelines of when you want to accomplish those things. And lastly, thank your donors. We love our donors and you want to retain your donors. So thank them times 100. Um, stay in touch with them and repeat the process. It's very, very important that these are donors that you can maintain, retain, and um, hopefully grow through pretty good fundraising. Word of mouth is great. So if you're able to bring on a new donor, keep them involved, share the information, and it might spur some new donations from their friends or family, etc. cetera. Um, but these are just a few of some milestones that you can think of as you're developing your campaign. Lupe, do you have anything to add on this slide? You know, I just agree with you with the, the thanking your donors, building those relationships are very important. So definitely thank them, send them thank you notes, thank you e-letters, take them some cookies, but definitely build those, those relationships. All right, so we're getting to the end of our presentation. I see a very quick question from Veronica. Um, she asked, when will the Giving Day platform be ready to create or generate information by the organizations? So um, if you were a participating org in 2021 or 2020, you can still access your detailed reports and donation reports from years prior to sort of investigate your outcomes. So you can find the total amount raised and the names, addresses of your donors. Um, if you were not registered as a participating nonprofit, of course, we would not have that information. Um, but in order to access it, if so, you would just log in and select the years prior to download and export. So um, that, that information, as I, as I said, is still accessible. And then for this year, of course, you'll be able to track all of your donations, including prizes and potential matching funds. Um, beginning on early giving day, which is October 13th. And so you just have to log into your account and sort of view your activity um, to start comparing some numbers and posting notes. Hopefully that answered your question, Veronica. Um, so I just wanted to ask everybody, let's check in. In one word, what are you walking away with today? And if you selected an intention, um, how will you honor that today and for the rest of 2022? So go ahead and drop it in the chat if you're still with us um, at this moment. I hope everyone is typing. <laughs> Desmond, I see knowledge, Victoria, creativity. She will honor that by challenging herself to try something new. I like that. Similar to Abigail, getting outside of your comfort zone. Yes. Um, Judith, she's walking away with shared knowledge. And she said, thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. Let's see if we have any more time in. Rogers, feeling inspired. I love that because that was my goal for today was to make everyone feel inspired and be thoughtful. Um, what else do we have? A reminder to start sooner than later. Definitely. Jackie, do you have your hand up? Yes, I do. Uh, this has been so helpful. I've gained such great information uh -huh. and I'm ready to get started. Yay, I love that. Let's get started. <laughs> um, who else might have I missed? Natalie, again, innovation. 
She will honor that by soliciting feedback from team members and advisory board members, encouraging them to be candid so that she can take or look for opportunities, excuse me, for improvement and explore new ideas. Abigail, again, creativity, doing her best to get out of her comfort zone and trying new things. And Veronica, not to make assumptions. Um, that is definitely something we talked about today. Rita, expanding our technology, definitely. There's so many new flat platforms, excuse me, and things that we can be doing to, to diversify our engagement. These are all super duper great. I'm super, super thankful. If you have some extra ideas or things you would like to add, continue to put them in the chat box. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next slide, which is just a friendly reminder. So um, our El Paso Green Day workshop series will continue. Our next workshop will be August 25th on the topic of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So um, you can go ahead and add that date to your calendar by going to the El Paso Green Day website. We have our workshops listed and it's very, very easy for you to add it to your Outlook, your Gmail, your Yahoo, et cetera. And then again, September 15th, we'll have a workshop on mobilizing your marketing campaign. And finally, October 6th, we're gonna gear up for giving day. So that'll be right around the corner before we know it. We'll have our committee um, sort of speaking on the ultimate checklist on things you should complete for your giving day campaign. I also just wanted to add that all of our workshops are proudly sponsored by El Paso Electric. So we're super duper thankful to have them as a partner. And once again, all workshops will take place from 12 to 1.30 um, via Zoom. And they will be recorded in case you're not able to attend um, one of them. Does anyone have questions about the workshops or today's presentation? Where can we download the, the PowerPoints? Sure, so I'll go ahead and create a link on El Paso Giving Day as a workshop tab. And so you'll be able to download them there. Um, I will also be sending a newsletter, so I'll also include you on the distribution to receive that information. Yeah. Also, wanted to add, we have some really great events coming up in the next couple of months. Um, Kendra Scott, Give Back Event, and El Paso Burrito Day are taking place together on September 6th. And so that information has been updated on the El Paso Giving Day website. Please plan to attend. Um, those funds will go towards some El Paso Giving Day prizes, and you can be entered to win those raffles. Um, in case you have not registered your organization, the last day to register is September 30th. And then um, October 13th is our Early Giving Day kickoff event. Uh, more information on those details, time and place, are to be announced. So um, save the date for all of these great things that are happening. Um, we're super duper excited, and once again, I'm really glad to have everyone here today. Most importantly, um, as I said, Early Giving Day begins October 13th through October 19th, and Giving Day this year is October 20th. Um, Janet asked, when is the Kendra Scott event? That'll be September 6th. It is a Tuesday. I believe it'll be from 4 to 8 p.m. at Kendra Scott and Chipotle. And finally, I think we're just around the one o'clock hour, but if there's any other questions um, or comments, I'm happy to stay on and answer any questions. My information is also listed or it can be found on the Giving Day website. I also want to shout out Lupe. Thank you so much. Give her a round of applause. Um, Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> yes, do you have any closing comments for today? I just want to wish everybody luck on this campaign. I hope everybody does amazing. And if anybody needs anything, you can always reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to help. Yes. 
And if Lupa's okay with it, I'm happy to share her contact info on the slides or in our distribution list. In case yes, you want to learn more from her. Um, but that, that really completes everything for today. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. I hope that you enjoy your lunch hour or find some time to eat. Um, and like I mentioned, we'll make this presentation and video recording uh, accessible very soon. So thank you everyone. Thank you all. <laughs>um, so essentially, you can drop by the shopping center near North Mesa and do some shopping, grab a bite to eat. We'll have a photo op opportunity. And essentially, um, you would be there to take a photo, do some shopping if you'd like, grab something to eat, and you would be entered to win um, the prize for any of those funds raised from Kendra Scott and Chipotle. So um, I see. Yes, that, that's sort of what's going on for those events. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and end today's presentation. Um, thank you, everyone, once again. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.